What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So it's been a while since we've done a video on Clothworks. Clothworks is a cloth simulation extension for SketchUp. In this video I wanted to teach you how to create cloth that's blowing in the wind inside of Clothworks. Before we get started, today's video is brought to you by Shaper 3D. Shaper 3D is a 3D modeling app specifically designed for use on your iPad with the Apple Pencil. Since SketchUp doesn't currently have a mobile modeling experience, consider checking out Shaper 3D if you're looking for a way to create 3D models on your iPad. It has a modeling interface that's similar to SketchUp's, but it's optimized for mobile. Plus, any model created in Shaper 3D can be exported to SketchUp or other desktop CAD formats. If you're interested in trying Shaper 3D, Check it out at thesketchupessentials.com slash shaper3d. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so if you remember, Clothworks is a cloth simulation extension for SketchUp. And what it does is it simulates the way that cloth would act inside your models. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a rectangle that's standing up. So I'm just going to tap the R key and then tap the left arrow key. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a box. And we'll just draw something kind of this big. Um, it doesn't really matter at this point. It just needs to be something that we can kind of subdivide into a flag shape. Um, I will note the base install of this is uh, free, but then you need to license it in order to get a couple different features like uh, the smart grids and the movable pins. Um, you don't necessarily need those for, for this tutorial. So what we're going to do in this case is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to make a flag. And so to make a flag, what we're going to do is we're going to select this whole object, right click, and we're going to click make group. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do in this object is we're going to right click on it. We're going to go down to the Clothworks option. We're going to click the button for Make Cloth. And so that's just going to basically tell Clothworks to treat this object like a cloth. And so now if I was to put a single pin in this corner and run the simulation, it would just kind of like hang there. So not super interesting at the moment. It's just an object that this is now simulating. And you'll notice that since this is an individual face, what this has done is this is just kind of split it up with a single try. And you can tell that this is not a very good cloth object. And so what we need to do in this case is we need to right click on this and we need to subdivide it. And the reason we need to subdivide it is we need to break this face up into a bunch of faces or a bunch of smaller faces so this acts more like a cloth. So the first thing I want to do is right click, go down to cloth works, and in the cloth option I'm going to click purge edges. What that's going to do is that's going to erase out that extra edge that was in here. And now what we want to do is we want to subdivide this face. And so subdividing this face is going to be splitting this face up into that geometry. And I'm going to go down to simple grid. And so when I type in simple grid, what this is going to do is this is going to give me an option for the size of the grid that I want to create. And so there's kind of a trade off here. You don't want to create so much of a grid that there's like millions of faces in here, but you want to create um, you want to create enough that this actually does a decent simulation. And so in this case, we're just going to right click, go to Clothworks and go to Cloth, and we're just going to do a two inch simple grid in this case. What that's going to do is that's going to break this up into little smaller faces. And so you can only see those if you have hidden geometry turned on. But if I have hidden geometry turned on here, you can see that this split this up into a two inch by two inch grid. Well now, if I run a clothwork simulation, you can see how this is gonna hang down and uh, it's actually gonna move around a lot more like a cloth. So you can see how there's some issues with the way this is simulating, but in general, um, you can see how this is kind of doing what we want it to do. And so now that we have this set up as a cloth, we're gonna adjust it to do some different wind things and some things like that. So the first thing to do is to click this reset button. And that's gonna be very important that you click the reset button. Um, if you just stop this and then try to use undo, it doesn't really work very well. So just make sure you click this back button when you're done, this reset button. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a pin right here. And so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna go into our cloth and we wanna turn off self collide. And so the reason for that is right now when we do this, you can see how if you look in the corner, this cloth isn't actually colliding with itself when it falls down. Um, it's just kind of like turning through itself and uh, it's not very realistic because cloth obviously doesn't go through itself um, when it does things. So we're gonna click on this and you're gonna go into the Clothworks UI settings and uh, if you don't see those, you can just click on this button right here to toggle the UI and you just wanna go over to object and you want to go down to cloth 
and you want to turn the option for self collide to on. So now, if I let this hang, you can see how this cloth is actually kind of running into itself instead of um, going through itself. So you can see how this cloth is just kind of um, hanging down in a very realistic way now. The cloth is kind of reacting to itself. The folds are not going through each other. Um, for the most part, uh, one of these corners, sometimes things get a little bit stuck and you have to adjust this a little bit. But in this case, I'm just going to reset this. And so now that we've done that, we want to take a look at a few other things. So for what we're trying to simulate here, we're going to knock this density down to maybe something like 130. And when you're doing stuff like this, it's almost better to just kind of have an idea of what you want these values to be and just um, type them in. I wouldn't get too hung up on them. Um, but the other thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to our simulation. We're going to turn our wind on. And so in this case, you can set the wind and what axis it's going to blow along. And in this case, I'm going to set it to blow along the X axis. And so right now, if I play this, it's still not going to work. You can see how when I play this, even with the wind turned on, uh, this is just falling down. It's uh, just reacting to gravity. It's not actually blowing in the wind. The reason for that is there's one more setting that we need to turn on over the, in the object section. It's called drag. And so when we turn our drag on, and I'm going to adjust my density back again. So drag is on. Um, thickness you could probably set your shear to one these others look good well now what we're going to do is we're going to click the play button well now you can see that because we set our wind to five meters per second the wind is actually blowing inside this simulation so you can actually see that the flag is being affected by this and since we have drag turned on now you can see how this is actually simulating the way that a flag would actually look inside wind and so you can adjust things like your wind speed so you can turn this up to like 10 if you want to you can add a little bit on the y-axis if you didn't want this to just kind of blow straight um, you can see how now you've got kind of a xy and you get a little more billowing in this so you can adjust the settings of the wind to make this look however you want and at any point once you have the wind kind of doing what you want it to do you can click the stop button if say you wanted to like render this or something like that um, so i could stop this right here inside my simulation then i could also hit the play button if i wanted this to continue simulating And in this case, um, I'm just going to click the button for toggle draped. So what toggle drape does is this lets you go back to your kind of flat view um, of your flag. So you can see how when I toggle the draped on, the flag is kind of in the billowing mode. When I toggle it off, the flag is kind of straight. And so the other thing I want to talk about is real quick, I want to talk about um, applying a a texture to this. So in this case, let's go ahead and we'll select something off of our carpets list just because these have nice repeating textures and so they work really well. And so what I want to do in this case is I want to apply a texture to this object. However, you don't want to apply the texture to the outside of the group because if you apply it to the outside of the group, you can see that the UV mapping isn't going to work right. You can see how your texture is doing this weird flickery thing that you don't really want. So instead, I'm going to reset this and instead of applying this to the outside of the group, I'm going to double click to go inside the group and I'm going to apply apply this to each face individually. And so when I do this, and I play this, you can see how this actually maintains the UV mapping of the material, meaning you can get really realistic cloth looks inside of clothworks. And one other thing to note though, is sometimes this makes your, um, this makes your computer run a little bit slow. So because this is going through and constantly updating the UV mapping as it goes, it runs a little bit slow. Well, if you want, you can go over to the object section in the advanced settings, and there's a check in here for update UVs on end only. And so what that means is instead of this constantly updating your UV mapping, um, if that's slowing your computer down, for example, you can check this box and then you can see how this updates the UV mapping as soon as I click the stop button but then if I click the play button again it's not going to update that mapping so this is just a performance thing you can just check or uncheck this box 
um, based on that. And then you can see how every time I click stop, this goes ahead and it reapplies the UV mapping. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Is this something you're interested in? Can you think of some cool uses for cloth works? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you liked this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.